This is the Louisiana Hometown Network, traveling the state to bring you the important issues and events. We're celebrating the uh, ribbon cutting for our new office here. We've been here for two years building up a presence, but uh, we just opened up this brand new office about uh, three months ago. And so we're here to celebrate uh, the creation so far of 250 new jobs here in Lafayette. And uh, we're on our way to, to 400 over the next four years. So they'll happen right here in this building. So we're excited to be here and do the ribbon cutting today. With ULL, we're actually working to uh, generate the, the kind of workforce that we need in order to meet the, the business needs of our clients around the world. We're a global IT company uh, serving clients around the world. We're 65,000 people strong uh, with a uh, large presence in North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. People say in this, in this economy that every two years technology is changing. And so in order to keep up with the skills that we need to do things like cyber protection for our clients, to do the type of agile development that our clients demand to keep up with the pace of digital technology, we need students who are trained in at least thinking in the right ways uh, and in some of those new technologies. The master's degree in computer science at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette is the oldest in the country. Today we produce more computer science and informatics graduates at UL Lafayette than any other Louisiana university, than the next two universities in Louisiana combined. We want to continue to grow. We have a plan to make an investment into growing this program in order to meet the needs of CGI and our other community partners, other companies that we have recruited into Lafayette in the past year and a half or two, that we will grow it into a top 25 computer science program in the country. Today at UL Lafayette we are welcoming CGI uh, into our research park. Uh, they'll be the anchor tenant in our research park. We couldn't be more proud and more thrilled to have CGI come and become our anchor tenant because that's a very clear manifestation of our mission as a university of research for a reason. We do all these great and wonderful things at our university with the purpose of at the end of the day we want to take the research that we do, we want to take the students that we educate and we train and, and create an opportunity for the economy of this region to grow. Otherwise we are just spinning wheels. Good afternoon and uh, welcome. My name is William Labar with CGI, and it is humbling to have the honor and privilege to welcome everyone here today. In April of 2014, CGI announced through a partnership with LIDA, UL, and LED that we would establish a new onshore IT delivery center of excellence in Lafayette. In January of 2015, shovels broke ground, and thanks to our partners, a welcoming business community, collaboration with academic organizations and state digital media incentives. We are happy to be here today to celebrate our grand opening with you and with 250 CGI members. It's amazing. <laughs> and we're, we're doing this today with a number of special guests that I would like to recognize with us today we have our distinguished governor, the Honorable John Bell Edwards. <laughs> Mayor President Joel Robideau of Lafayette. Thank you, Joel. <laughs> Dr. Savoy, President of UL. <laughs> Dr. Savoy. <laughs> Tim Hurlibus, President of CGI Federal. And last, I want to thank uh, LED Fast Start, Jeff Lynn and Lori Schilling, and One Acadiana and Lita, all three of which help us recruit new members and make them feel welcome to the Lafayette and Acadiana community when we bring them here. That service is uh, in it's indispensable to us, so thank you. <laughs> so we stand today, not in front of, but alongside all of you, members of the Lafayette community, um, we're new and we're longtime members of CGI, elected officials, business leaders, university staff, friends, and family. Uh, this is a community and partnership that we are blessed to be a part of, without which none of this could have been achieved without any of you. Uh, and for that, CGI thanks you for all being here today. And so without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce Mayor President Joel Robodeau. Mayor President Joel Robito was elected in October of 2015 and officially took office on January 4th, 2016. 
campaigning on the promise of working together with Lafayette's leaders and citizens to move the community forward, Mayor President Robodeau has been doing just that. With the launch of a live weekly radio show called The Sport of Politics, he shares his position on local issues, opens the phone lines to discuss the public's thoughts and ideas, and invites community leaders to share news and views on current local, regional, and statewide topics. In keeping to his commitment to move Lafayette forward, he has actively demonstrated this commitment in listening to the Acadiana community as he works to deliver the progress we all desire. Please join me in welcoming a true leader of the Acadiana community, Mayor President Joel Robodeau. Thank you, Will. Uh, what a great opportunity. What an incredible turnout. I feel like I'm at like a New York nightclub here with multiple levels. And uh, I, know I finally get to know what it feels like to be a rock star. I, uh, Will, I want to thank you for, for everything that you've done. Um, and also thank you for bringing home a, a state championship in soccer for Lafayette as a coach. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Will. Uh, real briefly, let, let me just say that, you know, when I, when I look at who's here and, and who's scheduled to speak, it, it is, you know, in, in perfect unity with the theme of working together because projects like this, companies like this, it just can't happen with a good idea from any one or two individuals. It really does take a team effort. And when you see the university here, the governor's office, LED, Lafayette Economic Development Authority, the previous administration that was here, uh, everybody's got to get on the same page, figure out how to make it work. And then, of course, you have to have a company uh, that's willing to, to work with you and to come here and bring this fantastic business to Lafayette. And so to all of the team members that helped make it happen, uh, uh, thank you very much, and certainly I appreciate it. Uh, but one of, the, one of the, the integral team members that I'm, I'm scheduled to introduce is a fellow by the name of Greg Gotro, and I don't know if you've heard of him or not. If you, if you haven't, then let me just say, though, that as Lafayette goes, it's, it's in part all too often because of Greg Gotro and his efforts. He, um, he understands what it takes. He makes sure that those of us as elected officials understand what it takes. And I'm hoping that he or, or Secretary Pearson, someone's going to talk about the importance of the digital media credit um, and what that means to not just CGI, in Lafayette, but the entire state of Louisiana. But it's incentives like that and it's efforts of the legislators that are here um, and those that are still in Baton Rouge working that, that help to make things like this happen. So with that, Greg, come up and share your wisdom with us. Thank you all. You usually can't say hi in three minutes, but Joel, thank you very much. Very complimentary, and uh, uh, Governor, thank you so much for being here. Dr. Savoy, Secretary Pearson, Mr. Alcubi, members of the business community, the university community, and of course, most important, all the folks from CGI. It's amazing to look around here, and I purposely didn't come to this building until today for a specific reason. You want to see it like this. This is what you want to see with all these bright people coming to work at their job in Lafayette, Louisiana, a place that many of them and many folks at CGI hadn't heard of just a couple of few years ago. Yet, what is happening today is a transformational moment for our community. And it's phenomenal what it could mean for our future. So with that, I also share with Joel in thanking our special guests, but there, you know, when, when these things happen, and this is the second in just a little over a month, uh, Joel helped us welcome Proficient into, I think I'm allowed to say that here, uh, into downtown. There 250 employees will be, and so did Secretary Pearson. And it's got a lot to do with the fact that the guys who can't be here today, the legislators, they've had the courage to understand the difference between an incentive and a giveaway. And the truth of the matter is, Louisiana Digital Interactive Media and Software Development Program is an incentive. Bricks and mortar 
permanent jobs. This is what it's all about, right, Jeff? And this is what it means to the future of our community. This is never going away. This facility will always be here as part as a monument to the community, to this great company, and to this great university. And so I welcome all of you to this day because you need to mark it down. This is when we came back as a community. We love our other industry, the energy business, the medical business, all extremely important. All big customers of CGI, as a matter of fact. And the truth is, they're all so important to us. But we've got to diversify. And the roots of that diversification have been at this university for 50 plus years. This computer science program, now this informatics program, and our wonderful community college, I know Willie's here. Thank you for being here. And the partnership of those 30 plus thousand students within a stone's throw in each direction of this park and this facility. They're the future. This company's the future. These digital media jobs are the future. This software development opportunity, the idea that companies, and I'll go ahead and say names like Cigna and the federal government and the many agencies actually know where Lafayette, Louisiana is, is a testimony to this company and to this community and this university. And so, Governor, I say that you have a wonderful opportunity. I know it looks like a challenge, but it's really an opportunity, isn't it, to readdress, readdress our state and to build a state with people like this, beautiful, diverse group in a facility like this. It's my job to introduce, so, so congratulations and thank you for everybody, Will and Trey, everybody, Tim Torito, who's no longer with us. And uh, I mean that jokingly, he's, <laughs> he's moving to the West Coast. He is well. And Mark Ashley, where's Mark? And Mark said, we need to check out those guys in Lafayette, Louisiana. And in Louisiana. And they came, they checked us out, and we won. And beat out a lot of communities. And so with that, I introduce only the sixth president of our university. Talk about continuity. And a man that's been his entire life here. Since 2008, Dr. Joe Savoy has served as our president. And frankly, the transformation of this community is on the back of this university. So, Dr. Savoy. Thank you, Greg. Uh, governor and distinguished guest, on behalf of the faculty, staff, and students at the university, I'm pleased to welcome all of you here, uh, particularly CGI as an anchor tenant here in the university's research park. As our Vice President Joe Biden once said, this is a big deal. <laughs> now our relationship with CGI represents a comprehensive public-private partnership that cuts across academic programs and research initiatives. With this partnership, our students will have opportunities industry internships, capstone projects, and access to advanced uh, software training. Our students are benefiting by gaining practical experience working alongside CGI employees, and after they graduate, having an option to remain locally in our developing Silicon Bayou. This partnership is further diversifying our regional and state economy by creating hundreds of high-paying jobs in Acadiana. And in many cases, it's bringing ba our alumni back home high quality, knowledge economy jobs, reuniting them with their families where they should be. And we're pleased to note that 40% of CGI's workforce in Lafayette graduated from UL. Most are recent graduates and many are experienced hires moving back to town. The governor, look around. These are all new taxpayers. <laughs> and Joel and governor, these are all voters as well. 
Now our faculty researchers and CGI employees are co-creating big data technologies innovations through the Ni National Science Foundation Center for Visual and Decision Informatics on campus, the nation's only NSF center of excellence in big data. The Innovation Center, which is right over here, a beautiful facility that we share with CGI, will become the focal point for development and demonstration of big data technologies. It will also serve as the home for our Center for Software Excellence to provide state-of-the-art training in software technologies for students from the university, from South Louisiana Community College, and from industry. In support of this partnership, the university is strengthening our computer science curriculum, already regarded as one of the best in the country. We're starting a new Master of Science degree in informatics effective this fall with significant input from CGI and the design of the program. We're already seeing significant increased enrollment in both of these programs just in the past year or so. In order to support this partnership appropriately with the help of Louisiana Economic Development, we are hiring additional faculty. At a time when higher education funding is facing shortfalls, uh, this innovative public-private partnership is essential to drive the growth of our academic programs and fuel our innovation capacity so that we can help grow and diversify the economy. I want to thank everyone for helping to develop this partnership, and we wish to reiterate to all of you the university's commitment to CGI and all of your success. Congratulations. Go Cajuns. So now I have the additional pleasure to introduce uh, Tim Hurlibus. Uh, Tim was appointed uh, a year ago president of CGI Federal, a wholly owned US operating subsidiary of CGI, bringing 26 years of diverse leadership experience across multiple business sectors, both in the US and globally. CGI Federal serves CGI's clients across civilian, defense, and intelligence sectors of the US federal government. During Mr. Hurlibus's career, he has served in leadership positions across the government and commercial markets in client operations, business development, sales, and strategic planning. Previously, he had led strategic growth initiatives for CGI in Europe and in Asia, focusing on key strategic accounts, working to connect global CGI resources with Europe and Asia pursuit and delivery teams. Please join me in welcoming Tim to the stage. Thank you, Will. Good afternoon, everybody. It's my great pleasure to be here in sunny Lafayette. And on behalf of CGI, I uh, also like to extend a warm welcome to Governor Edwards, Secretary Pearson, and our partners here in the Acadiana region for playing such a large role in the success we celebrate today. Together, all of our partners have helped create a business-friendly climate here in Louisiana, enabling us to bring new, exciting work opportunities to this area and to create more jobs. And to all of our distinguished guests from the community here today, thank you for being here as we celebrate this exciting milestone, the ribbon cutting for CGI's newest onshore IT services center of excellence right here in Lafayette. This location is a world-class center of excellence that provides information technology systems, development, maintenance, and integration services to our federal, state, and local government and commercial clients around the world. More importantly, this center is a key milestone in CGI's relationship with the state of Louisiana. We've been a trusted partner in the state since the 1980s. Experienced CGI professionals living and working locally have been delivering information technology services to a wide range of government and industry clients in Louisiana. And today, I'm happy to say that nearly 250 additional employees are here in this impressive new building delivering world-class IT services in critical high-demand areas such as cybersecurity, digital transformation, data analytics, and cloud to our clients around the globe, deepening our roots within the state and the local community. The center is highly strategic for CGI. Lafayette is uniquely positioned within the state as a community that can bring innovation to our market with the fastest growing workforce in the state, fed by one of the top ranked computer science programs in the country at the University of Louisiana Lafayette. At CGI, we believe that great public-private partnerships help create great communities. Lafayette represents the kind of public-private partnership that is so critical to successful growth across many dimensions. 
For us, Louisiana and Lafayette stood out above the rest for many reasons, including an excellent quality of life, proximity to both public and private sector clients, strong partnerships with institutions of higher learning, such as UL and South Louisiana Community College, and of course, a business-friendly state and local government committed to economic development, led by the State Department of Economic Development, as well as the Lafayette Area Economic Development Association. So what is exactly an onshore center? So as regular people around the world became more fully connected in the 1990s via a ubiquitous internet, the delivery of IT solutions was made easier because we could work in real time with people on the other side of the planet. So the phenomenon of shipping work uh, to another country became known as offshoring. So at CGI, we're using that connectivity to distribute our work to talented people right here in the United States. In locations like Lafayette, we call it onshoring. So, working with CGI colleagues who are co-located with our clients in places like Washington, D.C., or San Diego, California, or Durham, North Carolina, the people in this onshore center help CGI deliver both the steady state IT services as well as the transformational innovation our clients need in today's digital economy. Developing the right solutions at the right time for our clients is at the heart of innovation here at CGI. This strategy led us here to Lafayette and the ribbon cutting today of our fourth onshore center where we are committed to creating a total of 400 new jobs over the next four years. Since beginning operations in 2014 in the temporary space downtown, CGI and its employees have worked hard, not just to deliver quality IT services to our global clients, but to become part of this local community. Over the past year, CGI has helped support Project Front Yard, partnered with the Bayou Vermilion Preservation Association to raise awareness about the bayou, volunteered for United Way, supported the Lafayette School District through career fairs and events, and participated in organizations such as the Lafayette Downtown Development Authority and One Acadiana. In conclusion, I thank the state of Louisiana and the local community here in Lafayette for your warm welcome to CGI over the past two years. And I thank each CGI employee, or members as we call you, here in Lafayette. We can put on suits and ties and cut ribbons and pitch a tent in the parking lot, and that's a lot of fun and it's important recognition for this great milestone. But as we go forward, it's all of you that have delivered our success so far, and it's all of you who will drive us th to and through the 400 jobs we're gonna create here. You bring talent, knowledge, experience, energy, and innovation to the solutions and services we deliver to our clients. The world wants and needs what you deliver right here in Lafayette, Louisiana, so thank you. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the Secretary of Louisiana Economic Development, Don Pearson. Having served as Assistant Secretary and Senior Director of Business Development for LED since January 2005, Don Pearson was vitally important to bringing CGI to Lafayette. His current duties include the implementation of domestic and international economic development programs and job retention and creation efforts for the state of Louisiana. He is Governor John Bell Edwards' primary representative to government officials, local communities, and site selection consultants on all economic issues. Don has over 27 years of economic development experience and is a certified economic development professional. Please join me in welcoming such an important advocate for the state and its local communities, Don Pearson. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Greg Gautier stood here and said, wow, this really looks great. But when I sat down next to Tim, I said, Wow, this looks like it's costing you a lot of money. <laughs> we uh, aren't always in our element. Um, Greg and I have been doing this uh, a long, long time, and uh, probably all I know about predictive analytics is from watching Moneyball. <laughs> probably all I know about open source processing engines is from uh, the big source, I mean big short. And I'd know a lot more about Desert Storm than I would about Apache Storm that you all use here frequently. But uh, thank you to the partnership that brought all this together. City of Lafayette, ULL, Lita, One Acadiana, 
LED, all working together as a team. And, uh, and this can be the result. And so it's a very proud day that we share with you. I'm here to introduce someone that shares our vision, our governor. And um, our governor is a West Point graduate. He went on to the Louisiana State University School of Law, became an attorney. He served two terms in our legislature. This is an incredible background to do what he needs to do today. From the military, he got the teamwork. From his understanding of the law, he got the framework. And from his experience working in the legislature, he knows how to govern. His job now is a little bit different because I think of him as a, a bit of an architect and didn't list in the boxes that we just checked. But uh, that's his charge now, is to help us build our state. He's gonna do that through education. He's gonna do that through healthcare. He's gonna do that through establishing a vibrant economy. And we're very pleased to have the opportunity to do that with him. He might look, and I'm gonna share something with you personally, he might look just a little bit nervous to you today. I don't know if you can pick up on it, but, and it's not because he's gonna speak in front of this large audience. And it's not because he left the legislature unattended in Baton Rouge. <laughs> but it's actually because he's the father of the bride, Saturday. Thank you, Don. And, and as I left Baton Rouge, they were actually at the mansion setting up some tents like that one. And I'm praying for sunshine, just like we have today. But... Hopefully that'll come on Saturday. Good afternoon. Thank all of you for the opportunity to be here uh, with you uh, to share in this celebration. It is an exciting day for the state. It's an exciting day for this university, for this city, uh, for this company. Um, Joel, I want to thank you for your years of friendship and for the leadership that I know that you are um, bringing to bear here in Lafayette. And Mr. President, uh, thank you very much for what you're doing at this great university as well. And Don, I want to thank you for the work that you're doing for economic development across the state of Louisiana. My vision for this state is not just about responsibly balancing the budget and funding our critical priorities. It's actually about charting a better future for our people, honoring our veterans, caring for our seniors, healing the sick, educating the young, and creating opportunity for all. And that is why we're pursuing great companies like CGI and honoring our economic development commitments. Um, you know, this shiny new state-of-the-art 50,000 square foot building right here on ULL is a reflection of that commitment. Uh, this is a $13 million investment, but it's so much more than that. When you look at all of the people that have partnered with the state to make today a reality and all of the opportunity that it is providing uh, to the people here and people who are not here. Uh, I am excited about it, and I'm excited about the work that Secretary Pearson and all of the folks at the Louisiana Department of Economic Development uh, who are working so hard to continue to make Louisiana a competitive economic force in the 21st century. And they have done a remarkable job of attracting software development and information technology in places like Shreveport, Bossier, Monroe, New Orleans, Baton Rouge and certainly here in Lafayette. And it's partnerships with universities that are making that happen in many cases. You know, for example, right here at ULL, President Savoy decided they would triple the number of computer science graduates. And I know you're well on your way to doing that. And that's part of the commitment that he's made. In a time when I'm not as good a partner with you as you probably want me to be in terms of the budget, the state support for your university, you are hiring more professors to make sure you can deliver on that commitment because if we can train those people, obviously there are jobs, there's opportunity for them, and he understands that. And the sign behind me really reflects it all. It reflects the partnership we have between the Louisiana Department of Economic Development, the University of Louisiana Lafayette, and CGI, as well as the city and parish of Lafayette. And so Tim and Will, and all of the folks at the CGI team, thank you very much 
Uh, this is really exciting. I had an opportunity to tour part of this facility. Uh, I believe it's one of the first of its kind in our country where CGI employees and University of Louisiana Lafayette faculty and students can all collaborate on projects. What an opportunity for the best and brightest raging Cajuns. I mean, could you have imagined this a generation ago? I know. <laughs> but it's going to prepare people better uh, for career opportunities in new cutting edge industries. And while we continue to build investment and create jobs in our legacy industries, which remain critically important to Lafayette and to our state and to our country, we have identified and targeted other industries that can bring new opportunity to our state. And the software and digital media and information technology sector is one of the nine sectors of economic development that we are focusing on intently. Uh, there are obviously a lot of folks here today, 250 already employed. Uh, I believe there will be 300 by the end of the year and on the way to 400 here. Um, and I want to tell you, I talked about this building. I talked about the facility a while ago and the $13 million investment in it. And that is all neat. But the most exciting thing for me today is to be here looking at you, the people. Uh, because this is what opportunity is about. And it's such a delight to be here looking at folks who look like the state of Louisiana. And I'm just so proud to be among you. Um, it truly is an exciting day for me. Uh, we believe in the next generation of Louisianans. We believe in you. Um, and we can never be in the business and should never be in the business in state government or any government of guaranteeing equality of outcomes. But the whole purpose for ULL is to guarantee equality of opportunity. This is part of that. And I will be your partner to make sure that we can deliver on that promise. And so on behalf of the state of Louisiana, it's my great pleasure and privilege to dedicate, and now I understand the name behind it, the CGI Onshore IT Services Center of Excellence. Thank you very much. the community and the fact that it's a great place to live, the fact that there are universities nearby, U UL and others, that provide uh, great talent. UL has one of the best computer science programs in the country, so that's an important source of talent for us. And then, of course, the state and local government making it attractive to do business here. Uh, we're all big parts of, of us deciding to, to come here. I'm a longtime resident uh, of the Lafayette community. I've been here for about 15 years and I couldn't be excited about what is happening in my hometown with the emergence of a technology sector for people to build careers here. Today we couldn't be more proud of the fact that our workforce, the students that we are graduating are getting plugged into CGI and this beautiful building that is being dedicated by the governor and our community leaders today is a testimony, is a monument to that partnership that is truly translating into tangible economic benefit for this community. 200 to 300 technology jobs, high paying, high quality technology jobs for our own graduates, for our own sons and daughters that we would not have had a chance to happen in our community if it weren't for forward looking and forward thinking companies like CGI. Go to www.cgi.com uh, and uh, you can find everything you need there. Good afternoon, I'm Jim Inkster, your moderator, and Governor John Bell Edwards is in the house, and he's ready to take your calls at 877-217-5757. This is the second Ask the Governor show for Governor John Bell Edwards, and he has a guest, the Secretary of the state's largest agency, Dr. Rebecca Gee, is also with us, so if you have any questions pertaining to health care, this is a pertinent time to ask those. We do ask that you make your questions brief, that there only be one question, and uh, not any statements accompanying the questions because we have many people we'd like to get to along the way who, of course, are listening statewide to the Ask the Governor show with Governor John Bell Edwards. Now, Governor Edwards, uh, you have made it clear that health care 
is uh, a major issue in this state. It's certainly the largest budget item, and there are some issues that uh, remain to be solved. What's going on? Well, Jim, thank you for the opportunity to be back today, the second uh, in our series of Ask the Governor, and I want to thank the listeners for tuning in as well. Um, you know, because it's the largest area of the state budget, it also offers the most opportunity for savings and efficiencies and some things that we can do to just simply make sense for the state of Louisiana. In this case, what I want to talk about today primarily is the decision that I made to expand the Medicaid program, whereby we're simply bringing our federal tax dollars home to put them to work for our working poor so that our hospitals get reimbursed, our employers benefit from having a healthier, more productive workforce. Uh, and in this process, we're going to save the state $184 million in the first year. And with this budget deficit that we inherited, which while we whittled it down to $600 million for the year starting July 1st, $600 million is still a huge number. And that would be $184 million worse without the Medicaid expansion. So I'm excited about it. Enrollment starts next month. And then the expansion itself uh, kicks in, in in full on July the 1st. And I, I want to make sure that people have the opportunity to ask questions and get the information that they need. Uh, we do have a website um, that, that people can access information on. It's uh, healthy.la.gov, and they can go there. There will also be some phone numbers that they can call to get additional information. Uh, but this is not simply about expanding the Medicaid program so that more people have health insurance coverage, although that's very important. This is ultimately about improving the health of the people of Louisiana and get, achieving better health outcomes, and that is the primary mission that I have given Dr. Gee as the Secretary of the Department of Health and Hospitals, uh, and I'm very uh, happy that she's with me today, and she can actually offer some of her comments as well. Sure, Governor. So our new program, Healthy Louisiana, will ensure that most people in the state of Louisiana will have health insurance. You know, health insurance is not the end of our battle. We also have to have people be healthier, and that means eating healthier, exercising, doing those, eating that great Louisiana food, but making sure they're also doing those things to improve their health. But this is a huge a step along that way, and we're so excited to see the benefits to the health of our population as well as to relieve that anxiety that so many families around the state have. As a practicing physician, I've seen it so many times where people can't afford their insurance and worry about their health. So at least we can get that worry off the table, get people focused on getting healthier. 877-217-5757. Let's go first to John in Shreveport. Good afternoon, John. You're on with Governor John Bell Edwards and Secretary of Health, Dr. Rebecca Gee. Thank you, Jim. Um, my question is brief, but um, Governor, you had mentioned during the campaign that moving older adults into managed care was your absolute goal, and I'm curious if that's still your position and when that might happen, especially since that's where most older adults say they want to live. And I know there was a bill yesterday, House Bill 790, that addressed that. Yeah, well, John, thank you for the question. Uh, comprehensive long-term managed care is a goal that I have. Uh, I will tell you that, that we're not quite ready to go there yet because I don't believe that the stakeholders uh, uh, are singing out of the same uh, songbook on that. Uh, for example, we need to make absolutely sure that when we interpose uh, that insurance company between the state and the provider, that we're not unnecessarily um, uh, consuming dollars that could go towards services uh, for the, the elderly folks, in this case, who, who would uh, need those. And we need to make sure that we're focusing on quality of the care. Uh, and so we've got some work to do. I have uh, been in discussions both with folks in the nursing home industry, but also with managed care organizations uh, trying to... Uh, get them to sit down and bridge the divide. I do know that a number of states have, have gone to long-term managed care. I think it is less than a majority of the states out there. Uh, and so we have to make sure uh, that the savings would be real, that the quality would be there. Uh, and quite frankly, we're, we're not there yet, but it does remain a goal of mine uh, that we can get there. Leslie and Homa. Good afternoon, Leslie. You're on Ask the Governor. Hi. I am... I'm a single mother in Houma, Louisiana, and um, this last year, I went on to your government ACA website and um, put in my financial information, and which was fourteen thousand dollars of income, and I was told that my monthly premium was going to be three hundred and sixty dollars a month with a fourteen thousand dollar 
um, copay. Not copay. And, I, you know, what I would have to meet, which was the exact same amount as my income. And this did not include my child. My child was going to be included in free health care. So I'm just curious, how is it that anybody expects someone like me, who is not on food stamps in any other kind of government assistance, and has to pay $566 for my contribution to the system, is supposed to make it? Leslie, I, I believe you're talking about the federal website and the Affordable Care Act, and that's not something we run at the state level. It, in the question indicated that you believe that was a state website. Uh, and I can't answer those questions because I'm not intimately familiar with that. I can tell you that for folks in your situation uh, where uh, the $14,000 annual income may knock you out of Medicaid eligibility, the Medicaid expansion, uh, the order, the executive order I signed on January the 12th actually makes you eligible uh, for Medicaid coverage uh, going forward. And so that is a big problem that we tried to fix so that the whole between those who are currently eligible for Medicaid uh, and those who, who actually have access to, to insurance through the market or through private providers, uh, that we can fill that hole. And so I think if you will go to healthy.la.gov, uh, uh, you can find some information on the state website that I think will be a benefit for you and your family. You're listening to Ask the Governor on the Louisiana Radio Network. Governor John Bell Edwards is here, along with Secretary of Health and Hospitals, Dr. Rebecca Gee. Your number is 877-217-5757, and we'll be back after this short pause. This is Jim Inkster with producer Michelle Southern, and Governor John Bell Edwards is the host. It's Ask the Governor, and his guest is Dr. Rebecca Gee, the Secretary of the Department of Health and Hospitals. Your number is 877-217-5757. Once again, we implore you to be brief when you do get on the line. Please be patient. If you get a busy signal, keep trying, and you're likely to get in. We've got several lines, but as you can imagine, many people want to talk to the governor, and this is the first time in more than a decade a governor of Louisiana has hosted a show of this kind, and this is number two of many Ask the Governor shows. Governor John Bell Edwards now four months and a week into his term, first term in office, and Rebecca Gee, the Secretary of Health, has been busy with uh, many issues, much regarding the budget, but also what's the latest uh, pertaining to the Zika virus? So, Jim, last time we were on the show, we talked about the fact that there were no local cases of transmission, meaning mosquitoes in Louisiana did not have the Zika virus and were spreading it. That is still the case. Um, all the cases that we've had in Louisiana were people who traveled outside into Zika-infected areas and brought it back with them. Um, the CDC, however, still does recommend all pregnant women, uh, people planning pregnancy, not to travel to areas where Zika virus transmission is ongoing. Those are parts of Africa, Southeast Asia, the Pacific Islands, the Caribbean, Central and South America. And of course, this summer, we may have, we, right at this point, we don't, but you want to protect yourself from mosquito bites because mosquitoes try to have other illnesses that they carry. And so wear protective clothing. Make sure to spray, and particularly with Zika, make sure that you don't have standing water in your yard. So we're recommending once a week when you go out and take out your garbage, even a bottle cap, these, these 80s mosquitoes can breed in that. So make sure to take it out. Any pans you have under your pots outside, don't use those. Turn them upside down over the summer, and just don't have standing water around your home. Try to reduce your chance of, of spreading these mosquitoes. Johnny in Monroe. Good afternoon, Johnny. You're on Ask the Governor. All right, Johnny, tell you what, we're going to try to get you to a better place, and we'll go to Sam in New Orleans. Sam, good afternoon. You're on Ask the Governor. Good afternoon, Governor. Thank you for taking my call, and thank you for actually doing the show. I really do appreciate it, honestly. Uh, first, I want to start with the medical marijuana bill and uh, just say thank you for signing that to law, even though I do not think it goes far enough. Uh, the second thing I want to speak on is I heard you just recently come out about the recreational marijuana and that you were against it. I want to know why you're against it. I want to know, have you done the studies on different states like Colorado and see that they're making millions and actually making billions uh, and we're actually running a deficit. And uh, how do you feel about uh, drinking and driving? Because we know. All right. Um, one question, please. Go ahead. Now, Sam, I'm a lawyer, and, and your question would draw an objection. That's a compound question. <laughs> but uh, uh, I will be signing the medical marijuana bill tomorrow. Uh, I do believe uh, that that's the right approach. The state shouldn't stand between a doctor and its patients when the doctors believe that that is the, the best 
uh, available means to alleviating some pain and some suffering and to make someone uh, better. Uh, and, and I think the bill is carefully cra crafted to make sure we don't have creep uh, so that we have an unlimited number of medical conditions for which it can be prescribed or recommended. I, I don't support recreational marijuana usage. Uh, I will tell you I'm happy to allow Colorado and Washington State to do that if that's what they want. Uh, we can, we can uh, maybe one day be in a position to study um, uh, what happens in those states with respect to, to what they're doing, uh, but I, I have no comfort level with that right now and, and, and just don't support that approach. David in Lafayette. Good afternoon, David. You're on the air with Governor John Bell Edwards and Secretary of Health Rebecca Gee. Good afternoon. I get a question. Um, it's concerning the budget as to what um, I know John Kennedy had, had proposed a lot of things that would help the budget. What from John Kennedy are you applying? Well, first of all, uh, David, thank you for the question. Uh, John Kennedy proposes a, a number of things, some of which might help, uh, some of which actually wouldn't. Uh, but one of the things that, that we have done, in fact, this started actually before I became governor, is we, we actually have started a comprehensive review of contracts that we have issued um, at all the state agencies to find those uh, where we have state general fund dollars uh, that can be saved either through canceling uh, or not renewing or, or in fact maybe even reducing the amount we're paying on those contracts. Uh, I know that that is something that the treasurer has often stated as a way that we can save money. Uh, we're actually doing that. Uh, we've renegotiated, in fact, the, the contracts, what we paid to our managed care organizations with the Medicaid program. We're now paying the lowest amount that CMS would approve. Previously, they were paid at the 50th percentile range of an actuarial uh, range. We're going to the 7th percentile. Uh, we're renegotiating the contracts with the private partners and our charity uh, safety net hospital system uh, so that we can achieve savings there. Those are some of the biggest contracts in the, in the state. So those are things that we're doing. Those are things that we would have done whether or not uh, Kennedy suggested them. Uh, but but I will tell you that those that's that's an area where I think that there's agreement. Joe in Opelousas. Good afternoon, Joe. You're on the air How with Governor Edwards. I was calling to ask you, Governor, what is the principal difference and the reason why Governor Jindal refused to extend Medicaid, and you decided on that very rapidly to expand it? Did you? Yeah. Well, first of all, it wasn't a rapid decision to expand it. I. I've been studying this issue for several years in the legislature, and in fact, for three consecutive years, I offered legislation uh, trying to force the Medicaid expansion because I thought it was the right thing to do for our state. Simply, ra rather than sending our money to Washington where it gets reallocated to the 30 states that accepted the Medicaid expansion, I thought it would be better to bring it home, put it to work for the working poor here in Louisiana. Uh, because they need access to health care, they need health care coverage, our providers need reimbursement for the care that they're providing, and our employers need a more productive, healthier workforce. And in the process, we're saving $184 million. Uh, we're going to make a big impact as it relates to mental illness. I believe we can save money in our Department of Corrections as well. Uh, so for me, it was the easiest big decision that I'm going to make uh, but, Joe, I would never characterize it as a, a decision that was made hastily or rapidly. Uh, this was something that I had studied for a number of years. 877-217-5757 is your number. Kimberly in New Orleans, you're on with Governor Edwards and Secretary Gee. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. I was just wondering if the governor could address the phenomena that when you come in with marketplace insurance, the office visit at many places is prohibitive. So my normal doctor under regular insurance, $150, come in with Marketplace. It was a deposit of $250, and they'll bill me for the rest. I just find that completely unfair. Yeah, Kimberly, uh, you're talking, I'm assuming, about uh, the Affordable Care Act and, and what's available to you on the federal marketplace. Uh, that is not something that, that I am... Uh, uh, familiar with in, in any depth, but it's my understanding there's not supposed to be a copay uh, for primary care or preventative services under uh, the Affordable Care Act. And so I, 
I'm at, at a total loss to explain uh, the, the, or to answer the question that you just asked. Uh, you know, but, but if, you, if you've got a question or if there's a question out there as it relates to health care uh, that we are providing at the state level, uh, we're certainly more than willing and, and ready to answer those questions. Again, and that's what the Medicaid expansion addresses is for folks who really, frankly, can't afford those payments who are within the income levels for Medicaid, there will not be co-payments for primary care. So the Medicaid expansion solves that problem. 877-217-5757 is your number. And let's go to Greg in Church Point, who's been waiting for a little while. Greg, good afternoon. You're on the air with the governor. Hello. Uh, my, my question is the police in Acadia Parish out here don't seem to enforce the noise problems with uh, music, something loud music and motorcycles with no mufflers, and 18-wheelers with no mufflers, you know, just running straight pipes. All right. Now, I'm not sure that's a, an issue that the governor is going to be dealing with, but what do you think, Governor Edwards? Well, Greg, I appreciate your patience for waiting to ask that question. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, I would hope that you would you would uh, communicate with your chief of police, with your sheriff, uh, maybe with your police juror, uh, in order to make sure that, that they know that you have got a concern and complain about that and, and can register that with them. And and I would hope that they would take mm -hmm. action. But other than that, I, I'm not sure what to tell you, Greg. You know what it's like to have uh, faced uh, noise issues. You you faced it in the military, I would imagine. Well, I did. And, and I will tell you, I've been in public service now for a number of years. And as a state representative, I'm, I'm accustomed to getting uh, all sorts of questions uh, about things like that. And I appreciate Greg for asking the question. It is part of our job, not just to answer questions, but to redirect people to where uh, that, you know, they should be going with respect to their uh, concerns or their questions. 877-217-5757 is your number. Michelle Southern's the producer, the governor of Louisiana. John Bell Edwards is with us, as is the secretary of the Department of Health, Dr. Rebecca Gee, who dealt uh, specifically with uh, Medicaid uh, prior to becoming secretary. So uh, with the expansion, uh, how, how many people are we talking about will have uh, new access to health care in Louisiana? So over 300,000, we think in the first year, 375,000 working families will benefit from expansion. 370,000, and that's uh, in a state with about 4.6 million people, so we're talking about um, a good portion of the population. Christina in Lafayette, good afternoon, Christina. You're on the air with the governor and Secretary Gee. Thank you. Um, I am a medical professional, and I've noticed that in the hospital setting, we'll have non-citizens come in, um, illegal immigrants, actually, and they're not billed for services. How will the hospitals, physicians, ancillary services be um, compensated for the services they provide and the care that these people get if they don't? All right. So, Christina, under current law, um, undocumented immigrants who are pregnant are covered because of their unborn child through the Medicaid program, but they are not covered for health services. They're not eligible for Medicaid expansion. And so unfortunately under EMTALA law where an emergency room is required to at least assess and stabilize an individual who comes in, that will not change. So it's, it's a problem that's ongoing, but one that Medicaid expansion doesn't solve. But Medicaid expansion does solve part of the larger problem of uncompensated care because there will be more uh, compensation uh, flowing to hospitals for the care that they do provide for the uninsured, but the Medicaid expansion will not be available for uh, illegal or undocumented uh, uh, aliens. Tim in Bossier City. Tim, you're on the air. Hi, good afternoon. I am a uh, retired state employee, and I have a, a two mm -hmm. adult children who are currently state employees, and um, I'm just curious what the governor's plan is. I know that... Uh, they're losing state employees left and right due to, number one, the lack of, of, uh, of merit raises that are due each year, and number two, the rise in the, uh, the insurance uh, premiums that the state employees are having to, uh, to uh, continually absorb. And all right. Well, first of all, my mother, too, is a retired state employee, and, and uh, the problem as it relates to state employees is not unlike uh, most of the problems we're trying to solve right now in the state of Louisiana, we simply have to stabilize our budget situation, which is easier said than done. As, as you may remember, we inherited a $2 billion shortfall uh, for the year starting July 1st in terms of state general fund. 
uh, through uh, a lot of hard work and, and a lot of cooperation with the legislature, we've whittled that down to $600 million for next year. Still an awfully big number for the state of Louisiana. Uh, but clearly my plan is to stabilize the state, put us on an upward trajectory so that over the coming years we can strategically reinvest, and that includes in the public workers. We're halfway through this hour of Ask the Governor, so you've got another half hour to get in if you would like. 877-217-5757. Thank you for listening. Our host is the Governor of Louisiana, John Bell Edwards, and he is also here with Secretary of the Department of Health and Hospitals, Dr. Rebecca Gee. We'll be back after this brief pause on the Louisiana Radio Network. This is Jim Inkster. Thank you for being with us for Ask the Governor. Governor John Bell Edwards is here. Your number is 877-217-5757, toll free wherever you are in our state or beyond. If you get a busy signal, be, uh, please be patient. Uh, Secretary of Department of Health and Hospitals Re Rebecca Gee, Dr. Gee, is with us as well. We go back to the phone lines with Kyle in Baton Rouge. Good afternoon, Kyle. You're on the air. Hi, Governor. Um, my question is about what Louisiana is going to do about the opiate problem that is, you know, going through our country right now, and just in general, you know, metal, you know, um, mental wellness as well, you know, that deals with this. Well, Kyle, thank you for the question. I will tell you that at my very first uh, National Governors Association conference in at the end of January, uh, this was a topic of concern to the governors all over the the, uh, the country, and we we talked about a number of things. Uh, and I'm going to ask Dr. Gee uh, to mention a few of them, but I can tell you that we, we absolutely have to make sure um, that we make Narcan readily available to first responders uh, so that they can administer that without a prescription, without delay, because we know that it works. Uh, and But there are obviously some other things that we have to do. And one of the things that I know that they're, they're studying at the federal level is really restricting the ability of physicians to, to prescribe too many um, uh, painkillers at the same time uh, and and so they that's something that, that we're working on as well but Dr. Gee I know you've got some more information on this. Sure so Kyle this is a sad epidemic that affects so many of us and over the past 10 years we've seen a, a 10 times the number of folks die from opiate overdose than we had before and their baby's been born with opiate overdoses and it's a it's a huge problem in our state so of course as the governor mentioned making sure that our first responders have access to Narcan um, having Narcan available without a prescription is an important new development this legislative session. The governor will be back in four weeks on June 15th, Wednesday, June 15th. So mark your calendars for that. And if we didn't get to you today, we will certainly endeavor to do so. And if uh, you call in the next few moments and have a question, we will certainly pass it along to Governor John Bell Edwards. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back in a few weeks. Stay tuned. This has been the Louisiana Hometown Network. If you would like more information, please contact us.